So now the next steps are to do the neck pocket. This is gonna be four operations. I think, yeah, four operations. So the first thing we do is a hog out. This is a 3D adaptive hog. And the next thing we do is a channel route. So essentially this part right here or the lower horn meets with the neck pocket is super thin material, right? And it's very fragile. So what I do is I have a trace path, right? And it looks like this. And so the end mill goes down just a few millimeters and does this back and forth, up, down, cut, and it creates a little channel here, right? So this trace path comes into play when we start doing the contour of the shape. So right when it gets there, we retain this super sharp point that's very fragile and it doesn't break off when we're doing these contour paths. All right, so neck pocket is complete. So just to recap, we did a hog out, just a 3D adaptive hog that removes all the meat from in there. The next thing we do is we follow a trace for this little squiggly bit. And this basically ensures that when we eventually do the contour, when that end mill comes in, it has less material to eat through so that this fine tip here where the lower horn meets the neck pocket doesn't break off and it remains sharp and rigid. So this helps prevent any kind of breakout here. And this goes all the way down to the floor. The next operation is a finishing pass on the wall, so it goes all the way around. So the first hog out leaves about half a mil, and then the finishing pass removes that half mil all the way around really slowly, so you get a nice clean edge. And then the last operation is a horizontal finishing pass, also ensuring that the floor is perfectly smooth and flat. So this is just beautiful right now. Um, we're saving time here, so typically you'd normally want to remove all this meat and test your neck. Um, but this is quick and dirty, so we're just not going to waste time machining all that wood out. There's no point. We know that this neck pocket's going to 